Hello and welcome to a holiday-ish special of the MPS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Windy, the wind did go, I'd forget how this song goes. Oh man, that song is going to be stuck in my head forever and ever and ever. It is the new hit single for the holidays. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Oh wow. But anywho, so if you guys have not guessed what we're doing, um, let me just give you guys a huge hint. We're recording this on the 17th of December, and by my prediction, this episode will come out on the 21st of December. And for the Patreons, it will be on the 19th. So yeah, I, this is cutting it close, very close. So holiday special, yay! Well, you know what they say: if you're if you're not out of control, you're not doing enough. Indeed. <laughs> uh, so, in today's review, we will be doing the 2017 My Little Pony Holiday Special. So, in this one, well, looking at the wiki page, there's no real summary, but I'll try and tell you guys at home what it is. Uh, basically, Twilight and Applejack tries to tell everyone in Ponyville that the holidays is not all about toys or gifts or merchandising. It's all about the family. And everybody got salty. <laughs> Will they be forgiven? Well, find out soon. So before we head in, let's go for first impressions. And Silver, my man, what do you think of this comic? Oh, I'm so conflicted and maybe even a little confused. On the one hand, there's nothing in this that I would say is is inherently bad or toxic. Uh, it is a fun, somewhat self-satirical look at uh, the holiday commercialism and showing the ponies at, at their highs and lows. As I hinted, this is birthed yet another song from the comics, now up on YouTube, which I find delightful. I mean, I just love the fact that uh, even the comics can inspire, pe inspire people to sing. But at the same time, there is a, a certain cynicism that I've noticed in the comic specials, uh, especially for Christmas air season specials. Always sort of a, we are going to defy the Yuletide cheer just because that's what everyone expects of a little pastel horses. So we're going to have them make, act really unpleasant to one another or really hostile. And I come away from it a little bit, I guess, shell-shocked that I've witnessed this change in the ponies. I'm just like, ah, now I'm sad. Meh. And as for me, I like this comic. It's an interesting take on the whole commercialism on the holidays. And I, I, I don't really know what to say because in all honesty, we don't get it hard here, like how you guys get it in the States or anywhere else. Because from what I understand... Uh, before it's even Halloween, it's already Christmas decorations. Before it's even Thanksgiving, it's Halloween, something like that. Am, am I right? Well, yes. Usually it's that people are putting the Christmas lights by uh, Halloween, and the day of Thanksgiving, people are lining up the streets to uh, get into the shops for Black Friday. For the Christmas shopping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's, what, here's my take on that. I, I actually... I'm sorry to those who might feel offended, but for some, this is a holiday tradition to get in line and, and camp out for Black Friday sales. But that tradition is forcing other people to leave their families and go into stores early to provide the shops. And given the choice, I'd rather those people have the freedom to spend time at home with their families. So I'm not a fan of lining up for Black Friday sales. Yeah, I can guess, but... What do I know? I, I think we almost got it here with the Black Fridays because instead of a pure Black Friday, we got this online thing where it was on the 11th of November, something like that. I don't really understand. So everything was on sale. It was super dirt cheap and whatnot. And bye, bye, bye. And in all honesty, if I had the cash, I would have bought stuff, but I didn't. So SOL. Um, but back onto the comics. I like this comic, and I do like the idea of the ponies here, like Applejack and Twilight, trying to make sense 
of the scenario because the one that's quote unquote dealing with the chaos is the Flim Flam Brothers. And no man, like when they come into town, you better be careful. Like keep your wallet close to it, close to your chest because they're gonna rob you blind. Uh, but put that aside. If you guys at home have not read the comics yet, we recommend that you do because I personally like this comic. So go and take a read. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the comic. Now, here is our quote-unquote review. So we start off the comic with Twilight and Applejack in the store or in the craft store for some decorations and whatnot. And Twilight here needs some cotton balls. Not for some arts and crafts, just because she needs them for earmuffs because Spike is snoring really loud. You know, that's a sign of possible sleep apnea, and you should really take him to a doctor. True. But at the same time, too, does this mean Spike sleeps with Twilight in the same room? Or does Spike has his own room, and is he snoring really, really loud? So should she get some cotton balls for Starlight, too? Well, I figure Spike has his own room, so he must be snoring really loud, like shake the foundation loud. And so, yeah, it's probably, maybe, it's Starlight, so she probably has a spell that casts a null uh, sound bubble around her. Because <laughs> that's just the kind of, that's just the kind of lady she is. She could do <laughs> anything. Yeah, and Twilight is the one that's going to go old school. Alrighty then. Well, as we go on... The shopkeeper for the decoration store is putting up her heartwarming decoration up early. And Twilight and Applejack are a bit confused by this. And she just says that, well, we start early then. Most, some ponies need a little extra time to crochet a heart doll just right. So she just do it because, well, uh, she's going to be busy near the holidays. And Twilight and Applejack are a bit worried that, hey, uh, if our little youngins uh, see that it's almost uh, heartwarming, they're going to get into that mode of heartwarming thingy. And it's too late because snow is falling and they're making snow dragons? They're making a snow dragon, which looks like a certain Sundre dragon lord. And I do believe that Spike is looking at it quite longingly. My little dragon is growing up so fast. Indeed. Well, <laughs> this is the most disturbing part. Said Snow Dragon pops out to be Pinky. That's the most disturbing thing? Norman, your your sensibilities are too low. And they all share the joy of heart swimming. And the most important thing about heart swimming, which is presents. Yeah, presents. And Twilight and Applejack says that, hey, hey, it's not all about the presents. It's about spending time with family and friends and being there for each other during the holidays. And before they could put a pin on the lesson, here comes a wagon with no ponies driving it. And guess who, Silver? Guess who? Princess Luna? You wish. but it's... Always. <laughs> yes. No, but it is the Flim Flam Brothers. Uh, you know, it's amazing how these guys can keep strolling into Ponyville. Technically, they've never done anything illegal, but they've they've given everyone sour cider, mm -hmm. uh, been ratted out as giving a snake oil salesman cure all. Mm -hmm. If you go by the comics, they should be wanted for high treason. Not canon. <laughs> Not canon. It sure seems that way. <laughs> and this is featuring at least slow business during the holiday season. I don't know about that one, man. But in all honesty, they came barreling down to town to spread the cheer of heart swarming. And what's more, uh, and what's wrong with that, right, Silver? I mean, <laughs> the Flim Flam Brothers wants to spread the joy of heart swarming. Like, how bad could that be? I know Applejack ain't no uh, friends with them. <laughs> well, she's certainly no fan. Yep, yep. Uh, but still... One of the brothers quoted something from Twilight, which is heart swarming season, which she never said that, quote unquote. And she's just rolling with it. And uh, one of the brothers, I got no idea who is who, man. Like, uh, who is Flim oh. and who is Flam? <laughs> Flam? Flam's the fellow with the mustache. All uh, right. So Flim here 
um, pulls a crank and catapults some decoration to the arts and crafts store, turning it into instant heartwarming decoration and billing her with exorbitant prices. Oof. Very exorbitant, eh? Yep, yep. And Flem is also trying to promote some calendar to the grandma who is nearsighted or farsighted or has hard time to see. Uh, what do you call those calendars? Ad- advent, uh, advent calendar, was it? Uh, advent. Yes, advent calendar. So she can count down to the time before heart swarming. So yay. And also the kids here, well, the kids, which is Apple, Bloom, Spike, and also Pinky, are very excited about some new toys that they're uh, selling. And Applejack and Twilight says, no, you're not going to buy anything. This is just a sham from the Flim Flam Birders. And yet they give a no by crossing their their forelegs in a way that looks just like out of anime. I know. I guess the best example would be Pikachu signaling no to Ash. (laughs) (laughs) But that's cute, man. That is very cute. I do like it. Then on the next page, we get to see Applejack put reason to all of this. Like, guys, this is the Flim Flam Brothers. They cheated us before. And it's not about the toys and whatnot. It's about family and friends but the rest of the ponies are very excited about uh, decorations like um, Apple Bloom says sis I know they're fibs in the past but how the heck could this be bamboozled they just brought decorations and uh, Spike says and a calendar and Pinky says an excitement (laughs) an excitement I don't understand either yep and with that, the same from Brothers trying to sell cookies. Cookies that kind of a family recipe that is guaranteed to satisfy Windy the Windigo and Spike Ass. Um, who's Windy the Windigo? <laughs> and it's like, thanks, Spike, you walked right into their trap. Yes, you activated my trap card. It's song and dance time. So, at home viewers, I will put in a link to the song here because here's my first problem with this comic. This is similar to the um, Sirens comic from The Finship is Magic where I had problems with it because they're a comic that has song and dance. Like, their whole thing is about song. And without song or without a representation of a song, it is mute and terrible. When I first read this one, I was kind of trying to make a jingle in my head about something about um, Frosty the Snowman kind of theme in my head, but the song or the lyrics doesn't match. So I kind of write it off as, eh, this is okay. I do like the comic, but I wish there's I wish there's a song to accompany it. And my wish came true. In all honesty, the writer for the comic, James Esmus and his friend, made a song and posted it up on the I, it's not YouTube. I think it's Vimo or something like that. But still, um, it's posted online and available to hear. And it's quote-unquote not an official track, but it's the vision of the writer. So I'm going to say it's quote-unquote official because I know Hasbro ain't going to spend time to make more songs. And plus, Windy the Windigo is pretty cute. I know. She is cute. Although they said that in Paranoia Agent too, and look where that got them. Yeah, yeah. But still, okay, um first things first, Silver, the song here. Before the music release and after the music release, what do you think? Well, in truth I haven't really gotten to give the music release a proper listening. It's been a hectic period for me. Hmm. But I definitely got the it's more the visuals. How Flynn and Flam are posing in these dramatic singing poses, how everyone has a big sort of conga line. Uh, going after it. They're so energetic and expressive about it. You can tell it's, you can tell even if you can't hear the music. I myself am not very musically inclined. They are really pulling out all the stops and getting that flim flam energy, which is both their charm and their attack. Yes, yes. They use charm attack. It's super (laughs) effective. Yeah. You mentioned before that you didn't really give the song a full 100% listen? Not yet. Not sure. So, but did you listen to it then? 
Mm, I listened to maybe just a few few seconds, but I was like, oh, that's cool. I'll have to listen to this later. It's later, and I still haven't listened to it. Oops. You want to you want to give it a shot now? I can't wait. We are on a timeline. We get, we should just keep going. All right, man. And as for me, like I mentioned before, I had issues with the whole song and dance kind of thing. But yes, the visuals here do show Flim Flam Brothers doing what they do best, which is song and dance. And it is really energetic. They have, a f- they really show that energy that they have. And it's fun. It's fun to see them do what they do because it's very entertaining. They're show ponies at best. And with the song, it add that additional awesomeness that's missing from this comic. And I highly recommend that people go listen. I'll put in a link in the show notes below for you to check it out because it is gold. So, after that, the townsfolks are kind of, not really bamboozled, but they're um, hyped to buy merchandising like mugs, cookies, toys, calendars, and so on. And we even get <laughs> a fry pony who says, take all my bits. <laughs> yes, indeed. He's got the perfect expression for it. <laughs> Although it's, yep. it's easy to miss Fry on the first read through because I was focused on Twilight and her Pac-Man. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Yeah. And by the way, we, we haven't been doing this for a while now, but um, the art is done by Brenda Hickey. And I have to say that Brenda Hickey has that anime expression thing going on with her art and I highly enjoy it because um, during the Pinkie Pie and Twilight Friends Forever series she insert a lot of anime reference in that one so I highly enjoy her work oh yes do go check it's in the first panel and yes there's a lot to see with this one because you got <clears throat> uh, bulk biceps um, also doing the yeah thing and also giving bits you see um, Spike drooling over some gems that one pony is using as payment method and Applejack and Twilight are kind of salty. Just a little bit salty. They're they're going against the grain. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, uh, Flame and Flame here are very happy because they're spreading the joy of heart swarming and everybody gets what they want. And Twilight here scolds them and says that, let me just paraphrase, this is all extra stuff, distract us from the real meaning of heart swarming, meaning that um, this is not really heart swarming, or this is not really the full intention of heart swarming, which is to spend time with family and friends. Like, all this buying and stuff is not really heart swarming. Like, you're supposed to spend time with family and friends. And everybody do the, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't mean to, even the flim and phlegm. And to show their remorse, they say that you should buy the holiday special comic book. So remind yourself of the true meaning of heart swarming. So yes, there's the Flim Flam Brothers are trying to sell a holiday comic book special. <laughs> and which Pinky at the side corner says, Ooh, a holiday special comic. We should all buy extra as presents for every pony we love. Oh yes, that'll, that'll work great. So subtle and self-satirical. And that, another thing, that expression with her lips, of which she <laughs> apparently has now, is going to haunt me forever. Yep. I, I have to say, that that there cracks me up just because of the satirical nature of the whole thing. It's like so meta. The comic book is about holiday special, and they have a comic book holiday special, and they're asking us to buy more. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. They, they're, they're becoming self-aware. Yep, yep, yep. My Little Pony becomes Skynet in 2018. <laughs> oh, God, no. <sighs> but as we move on, we get to see that the uh, craft, Arts and Craft Pony is being excited about, hey, um, with all this hype for the heart um, I guess a lot of ponies need gift boxes. And Flim here uh, steps on a machine or steps on a compression that produces snow and buries her. And with that, they sell more boxes to the, well, um, suckers. I mean, the eager ponies to buy their stuff. Well, yeah, they are kind of suckers because they've engineered the holiday season rather than a day. And well, with that, um, Twilight and Applejack carry the youngins uh, back home because uh, they don't want to be involved in this hoopla. 
And Spike and Apple Bloom are really sad that they didn't get their stuff. The next morning, Twilight wakes up from a very horrible nightmare. And said nightmare is the uh, Windy the Windy Go song playing on loop in her head for 10 hours. Could you just imagine? Oh, no. I, okay, true story. My grandfather was at Disney World, and he got stuck. Uh, the the It's a Small World ride oh, got wait, stuck. Say, how? Well, okay. Explain like, the scenario first, because what happened? Well, I don't know the mechanics of what happened. It's just he and a group of people were riding the riding the It's a Small World tour. So, you know, all the, all the little animatronics waving their multinational diversity and singing. Mm-hmm. But then all of a sudden, the uh, the ride jolts to a stop. And for three hours, they're stuck <laughs> in there. They can't get out because there's water all around. And no one turns off the music. <laughs> so it's a small world for several hours. Honestly, I'm not, I'm surprised that no one tried to get out and swim to the shore and punch one of those uh, animatronics in the face. Oh, God. So who told this? Did your grandfather told you this story, or was it secondhand from a family member? Uh, let's see. I believe my dad told me this story. Two things my grandpa never talked about was his time in the war and his ride with uh, It's a Small World. <laughs> Oh my god. Is that bad? <laughs> so for Twilight to have uh that flim- the Windy the Windigo song stuck in her head for an entire evening. Oh that poor dear. My my heart bleeds. I cry real tears for you, Twilight. Oh, it's, okay. it's okay, man, it's okay, man, because Spike comes in and offers her breakfast in bed. Like that's the nicest thing that a dragon could do, right? Without ulterior motives, of course. What ulterior motives could that be, Silver? I mean, he's just a kid. Okay, you just kind of answered your own question there. <laughs> I know, I'm just setting it up for you, man. All you need to do is whack it. <laughs> just whack it. Whack yep. it good. <laughs> if something goes along, you must whack it. <laughs> Alright, so you're not going to take it, man? Alright, then. So, uh, we're, we're, I'd like to I think have... I have standards. <laughs> All right, you know. So, after offering Twilight breakfast in bed, Twa- Spike here shows his list for what he wants for heartwarming, and oh boy, the set list include windy the windy go memorabilia, including a coloring book, a doll, a stapler, trading card games. Yeah, yeah. So he wants it all. I, uh, I went, I went Miss Deeply. I went Miss Deeply. <laughs> mm. uh, on Applejack's end, Apple Blue wants the same thing too. Oh boy. And uh, Applejack's complaining to uh, Granny Smith that, oh, during our time, you never uh, let us do all this thing. Like, and look how we've grown up. And Granny Smith here is looking um, like, uh, yeah, 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 like, yeah, I did nothing wrong, yeah. Well, like I said, kids are just genuinely impatient. And of course, she, in a repeat, she's harassing everyone who passes by. So even when she gets her cutie mark, no customer is safe from Apple Bloom. Yeah, but still, she's a kid and she's hyper for toys. And Applejack says, hey, uh, how about you treat our customers, hey? And said customer is, um... Well, I usually make apple pies this time of year, but do you have any of those special windy cookies instead, or windy spiced tea, or... And that was the last straw, like, Applejack cracked, and... Oh, is... oh better yet, she's a nutcracker. <laughs> Which, honestly, that's what... Blim Flan Brothers. <laughs> yeah... And I, I, I'm, I'm thinking that this could be the last straw that your grandpa almost did if it went on for four hours. A very, very, very possible. <laughs> yeah. So, anywho, uh, Applejack is fuming and wants to get away from said location for a bit. And Twilight uh, meets up with uh, Applejack and they two go to a place to calm themselves. And Twilight here says, um, don't worry, I usually go to my happy place to calm down. And 
Applejack says, uh, that's a good idea. So, like, I picture myself in a grove of apple trees and whatnot. And Twilight says, nah, I mean, actually go to my happy place, which is bookstores. Yay! And they enter the bookstore and Twilight here and Applejack notice something. They've got music. Music! Yes. yes. And <laughs> the clerk says, Oh, do you like it? It plays Windy the Windigo. I bought it from those nice vending sales pony. They say a survey found that 11 out of 10 ponies want to hear an endless loop of the same holiday music when they go anywhere this time of year. I feel there's a propor- uh, proportional uh, relationship between hearing the same holiday music and then wanting to go on a bit of a rampage. <laughs> I- I'm on a rampage. <laughs> yeah. And in all honesty, this is reality. <laughs> this is reality made fiction. Because, tell me, Silver, because when you go to a department store or whatever it is, you'll always hear Mariah Carey's Christmas Carol song. You'll always hear the Jingle Bell song. And you'll always hear some other rendition of some artist singing the Christmas song. And wherever store you go, it's going to be the same old thing. So what he's saying here is true, man. Mm, it is true. I mean, honestly, I... I mostly hear Frank Sinatra. Oh, really? You know, but, but maybe I'm just very attracted to old blue eyes. <laughs> all right, then. All right, then. What, what can I say? It's, it's there. The music is meant to celebrate the season, but to be exposed to it every waking moment, or in a shopping, it takes on a very different and perhaps more frustrating meaning. So I can empathize with Twilight, although. The giant head, the flames shooting out of her eyes, and the uh, giant jagged teeth. Yeah, somebody gonna die. They all gonna die. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, Silver, I, I I think you have not worked in retail before, have you? Oh, I worked. Uh, well, let's see. I worked uh, grocery stores in the summer. My biggest thing was the Grateful Dead concert that was going wow. on. So mm, I didn't get to hear the Christmas music, but that's not a bad thing. Uh, grateful that is great. Uh, grateful that is okay. But here's the thing, Silver. A lot of people who work in retail kind of, well, they don't really like the quote unquote endless loop of holiday songs. That reminds them of things that they need to do, which is work, dealing with unreasonable customers, and getting not enough pay. So I can understand they're hating these songs, but for Twilight's case, I think she's going a bit overboard, but we'll see what she does next. She kind of goes to the Flim Flam Brothers and demands that they stop this because um, they're ruining the holiday cheer. They're ruining heartwarming and also cutting in line. They're, they're, they're cutting lines, like Princess Twilight and Applejack are cutting lines because Rarity and Fluttershy are next in line to get their windy uh, stuff, like windy swag. <laughs> Try to get their swag. And this is the only cameo for, for uh, Rarity and Fluttershy. How, how sad is this? Yeah. I have to say that Rarity looks really, really fetching in her outfit. And Fluttershy looks cute in her... Um, what you call this hat? I, I I don't know. Bunny hat. Honestly, all I'm thinking of is uh, Bob's Burgers when I look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Princess Twilight here demands that they stop this selling of items and bring back the proper Christmas or wait, <laughs> uh, holiday or heartwarming cheer. With a bright idea, Princess Twilight says that, hmm, you know what? Two can play this game. And she hops onto the wagon, declaring that, Oh, everyone, from now on, all uh, Windy the Windigo uh, memorabilia are for free. Everyone is excited. The Flim Flam Murders, not so much. They calculate that, um, can we? No, man, no, no. Like, we're going to make a loss. And close up shop. But here's the thing. They, sa- they said they gave Twilight credit. Well, okay, Twilight claims. First off, they have, they pretty much, at this point, is Twilight and Applejack, Elf, Gag, Flam, because it actually mm-hmm. says Elf, 
And then Flam gags Twilight back with a cookie and shelf. And I didn't know that elf on a shelf was a thing until this comic. <laughs> uh, I didn't notice that one. Where, where, where is it? Oh, uh, let's see here. It's the it's the page where Twilight says, if you can't beat him, join him. Oh, yeah, that one. With the elf shelf. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I see that. So right there, you just assaulted the princess. But she's not a claim that gave her credit, so she's buying it for everyone. But credit implies you're going to get paid back later, right? I don't know, man. Like, uh, you know, honestly, I got no idea about this one because in the way that they are saying this is that they they want the Flim Flam Brothers to give their merchandise for free. Not saying that Princess Twilight would pay for it because in all honesty, this is all a con. Uh, the Flim Flam Brothers are conning the ponies out of their cash for selling stuff made in China. And... Princess Twilight here is conning the Flim Flam Brothers to give their Shrek for free. So, in all essence, nobody's winning here. Well, definitely no one's winning in this case. Yep, and when I say that, um, once everybody, sorry, once the Flim Flam Brothers leave town, everybody's mad. They're mad because they didn't get the chance to buy their toys for their youngins, or they wasted time waiting in line for nothing. And one pony needs cookies. And everybody's angry. And here's the part where Spike and Apple Bloom says, We know. We know that we're getting bamboozled here. But we enjoy it for the holidays because we like it. It sounds strange to you, but we do. It's one of those things where it's hard to explain, but we want it. We want those merchandising. We want those toys. There's no coherent reason to it. We just want it. And you chased the only seller that sold them. Great job, you two. Honestly, I find this baloney. Absolute baloney. First off, they're saying, oh, we wanted that. We were having fun. Now, you were buying into a fad that someone else put out there. It wasn't even your choice. And that's one of the big things. Your Spike declaring that they should, that they should respect they know what's fun for themselves and like no, you guys bought into this. You weren't thinking for yourselves. You were just letting someone else do the thinking for you. And in a way, I think Twilight and Applejack, as guardians of these younger souls, should assert themselves. Now, driving the Flim and Flem out of town, that mm, that might be going over the limit. I do appreciate the moral of you shouldn't be assume you know it's best for everyone. But definitely in the terms of familial relations, you have a responsibility for their healthy upbringing. True that, but I think the point that Spike is trying to make is for everyone in Ponyville because with them showing the Flim Flam Brothers away, it's affected everyone, not only them. Because everyone there is an adult, they know what they're doing, and they have the youngins to deal with. This reminds me of the Action Man toy. Remember that Schwarzenegger movie? Oh, sorry, I think Action Man, I'm I'm thinking of a IDW comic. Yeah, it's Turbo Time. Oh, yeah, sorry, not Action Man. What was it again? Jingle All the Way, yes. <laughs> uh, that, that started the me of, put my cookie down. <laughs> put the cookie down, down, put the cookie down. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but still, everyone is angry at Spike and Applejack and they see that they did nothing wrong. And yeah, they did. They did. The next day at the Apple family's farm, um, Applejack and Twilight, well, feeling a bit sad and feeling a bit, you know, we shouldn't have done that. We we should apologize to the family and say that, hey, um, we should probably say sorry and we shouldn't have done that before they could go in and say so uh everyone lis- listens and they accept their apology and apple bloom and spike wanted to say sorry for their self too because they shouldn't have overreacted that way and everyone goes back into the house and keep themselves from from the weather and i think uh apple bloom here as applejack um so sis is Windy really out there making it snow nice each year? 
Apple Jack replies, I don't know, Apple Bloom. Uh, what do you think? Apple Bloom replies, I think, yeah, there really is a windy. <laughs> and guess what, boys and girls? We get to see another cameo. A blue hoof and wing pops out from the clouds. And it's Rainbow Dash, she says. Are you kidding me? Who is Mix? Sure, the weather works around here. Pfft, oh, well... Well, that's the thing. You know how this world works. The the Pegasi engineered the snowflakes. We've seen the the snowflake factory. <laughs> Scootaloo is still having nightmares about rainbow factories. Oh god, no! But uh, yeah. I just think to myself, I guess that there's buying into holiday charm, but then you're like, you already live in a magical world. It's so confusing. <laughs> I know. I know. But still, it's a nice cameo here, and uh, <laughs> I I don't know, man. Like this is just nutty for me, and we get a nice picture or a nice um, holiday greeting card from the artist showing everyone and their family, or every pony and their family at least. So you get to see Princess Luna and Celestia, Spike. Uh, Fluttershy and her family, Pinkie Pie and hers, Rarity and hers, uh, the Sparkles, Rainbow Dash and Scootaloo with her family, and so on. This is a really nice picture, I have to say. This is nice. Like, oh, this is nice. And shipping fuel for su Sunburst and Starlight. Yay! I know. And also, I really wish there was Trixie there. But, ah, Vegas can be choosers. Okay, so we could only ship so much in one picture. Ah, true, that, true, that. And with that, uh, warm hearts and happy days from all of us to you. And comic ends, yes. So, Silver, final thoughts. What do you think of this comic, man? Oh, it's a fun read and it's going to be different from person to person. I still get messed up when everyone just goes way bitter and angry from Applejack and Twilight. And I was like... Wow, you're trying so hard to subvert the classic uh, message, you know, Christmas isn't about presents, even though we all get presents. But by doing so, it makes everyone as hostile as almost in uh, fame and misfortune. And there's that awkward feeling of, wow, I like these characters when they're, you know, they're, they make mistakes, they air, but then everyone comes together and is friendly and happy again. This one, everyone's still pretty much mad at Twilight and Applejack by the end, except their family. And it's just like, wow, that feels really weird. And I wonder, combine this with the Equestria Girls holiday special. Let's see, there was a holiday special where Twilight was reading books while stranded in the train station. And the main, her friends come, but they left Big Magatosh trapped in an ice crevasse. <laughs> yeah. I and I just, was last year. I, I listen to all that and I read it and I look back and I was like, why do these ponies act more cynical and horrible around Christmas or heartwarming than they do in everyday life? It's like an inverse. Beware they're coming to Heartswarming for they will all destroy you. <laughs> I think that's the only time of year they can do it. <laughs> I, just, I don't know what... I don't know these stories. They're so mean. <laughs> uh, anything to add, man? No, just that's the oh, that's the part that makes this sort of awkward. Otherwise, it's, it's fun. It's got a good duo of message. It's not about presents. Don't buy into the fad. But also don't assume you know what's best for everyone by default. True that, true that. And I have to agree with you on the lesson there. The lesson is told in a way where don't it, the holiday, like especially Christmas, is not about the presents or the getting of the presents. No, it's all about spending time with the family and uh, connecting with them because that's the only time of year where you're all stuck in a room where you need to be warm because if you go outside you'll be freezing to death unless you're in Australia. So that's another story down there. But still, the fact of the matter is, it's all about being with the family. And being with family is always good. Isn't that right, Silver? Always good. He has his choppy waters, I think. But I won't say I... This year I spent three weeks with my family on a ship. So believe me, that was not Christmas. That was a celebration of my father's birthday. Eh, true, true. Here's what I'll say. Holidays are meant to crystallize an idea that's supposed to last year-round. 
generosity towards others, peace on earth, goodwill towards your fellow men and women. Mm -hmm. So Christmas is meant to be an example, and it's not just that one time. Ideally, you would carry that with you throughout the year. Some, and and I guess, like I say, oftentimes I feel like we try so hard to subvert that trope because we've heard it so much. But especially in these last couple of years, we've really needed that message. Mm, true that, true that. And well, it's one of those things where the comic here is kind of playing two sides of the coin where they want to tell that, hey, uh, buying toys and buying whatever it is is not the true meaning of the holiday. But at the same time, too, it's the spirit of generosity and whatnot. But you know what? I'm not going to babble on about the mechanics of how this works or not because that's up to the individual person. Because to me, buying something that someone wants and looking at their face light up because it's the thing that they want and they're happy for it, uh, brings me joy. I like looking at that. I like to see their face light up. That's me. Mm. And somebody giving me stuff, like I do highly appreciate it and I like it too. So in the end, being with them for the family and also giving them stuff is good too. So, eh, it's one of those things. I like the comic. The comic was highly entertaining and the song was awesome too. So, yeah. But anywho, Silver, um, next week is going to be Christmas. I think we should take a break, should we not? And spend time with the family and whatnot? Yeah. I intend to, but through the wonders of internet, we can still present something for our listeners. True that, true that. That something is going to be a patron special. And <laughs> here's one of those scenarios where I always say that the MBS show reviews do a lot of things. We do pony comics, episodes and movies, and also other things. And this week's Christmas patreon special is going to be that something else and i don't know about you silver but i personally like the miraculous ladybug and we're going to review its christmas special so that'll be next week for um well after christmas near new year's for you guys so yeah we're going to review that one I can't wait to hear what you think silver <laughs> it will be an interesting experience as i enter this cold turkey Yes, I have seen the entirety of season one. So yeah, I want to see how the dynamic works. So anywho, if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com and coffee.com. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurker Cat, Nebuchadnezzar, Starstream, Master of Lag, Amy, and also Mark. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for the awesome support. You guys have been awesome, and you guys should have an awesome, awesome Christmas holiday special thing. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I'm the Silver Quill. And we'll guys see you next week with another amazing episode of the MBS show. Happy holidays, guys. Merry Christmas. Windy the windy go. Oh god, that song is stuck in my head now. See, maybe that's why I shouldn't listen to it.